hits happen when you press a button to do an attack. And while your attack is coming out, you get hit by your opponent's attack. You won't get smacked by a counter hit during the recovery of an attack once it's already finished coming out. But until then, you'll be in a counter hit state. Got counters down then? All right, get to it! Aim for a counter hit! Action! Action. You idiot! counter hits on purpose, you'll get really good. The reason for this is that when you do a counter hit with an attack, it can have different effects, such as increasing the amount of time the opponent is stunned from the hit, knocking the opponent down or away in a different manner, etc. It will even allow you to do combos that you normally couldn't. For instance, Ragna can't normally follow up Hell's Fang with standing B, but if Hell's Fang hits and it's a counter hit, Standing B will connect in time. Oh, also, some moves such as an Inferno Divider puts you in a counter hit state until they're completely finished. So when you block one of those moves, that's a good chance to start a combo that you can only start with a counter hit. Hey, Senna, don't explain everything. It's not fair. Next are Fatal Counters. Uh, you do this one, Senna. I thought you said it wasn't fair for me to explain everything. Fatal counters have even greater benefits than counter hits. The conditions for fatal counters to occur are the same as counter hits, but fatal counters will only occur when you hit with very specific moves. Luna, do you know which of Ragna's moves can cause a fatal counter? Oh, um... Blood Scythe and Inferno Divider? Maybe? That's right, you got it. A fatal counter occurs when you land a counter hit with a move that causes fatal counter. But here's the main benefit. Every attack that's part of a combo that started with a fatal counter will increase the length of time the opponent is stunned from each hit. What that means is, there are combos that won't connect under normal conditions, but will work when you do a fatal counter. To give you an example, for Ragna, standing C to forward C is a combo that will only work off of a fatal counter. Aruna gets it now, so that's what those are. You're so smart, Senna. All right, now you try it. Do a fatal counter combo. This tutorial uses a special setting that forces a counter hit state. Try doing a fatal counter combo. Action! Encounter the fighter! What side? Mother idiot! What side? What side? What side? You What side? What side? What side? What What Encounter! Death Spider! 
And so you the fire based on this! And so you the fire! Dead strike! Fantastic! You! You! Idiot! You! You! Understand fatal counters now? If you can land one, you can do a much more damaging combo than you normally could. So when you're counterattacking, go for a fatal counter. Uh huh. So you can really punish someone if they miss with Inferno Divider, huh? So if you want to do fatal counters, you'll have to think about what you want to do when a fatal counter happens, right? That's right. It's a little tough at first, so you don't have to think about it right now. But as you continue to improve, you can research it on your own. A throw counter is a counter hit caused by a throw. The conditions for a throw counter to occur are the same as with a normal counter hit. So it will happen when you throw the opponent while they're doing an attack and during the recovery of certain moves. When a throw counter occurs from a throw, you can't do a throw escape. In fact, when a throw counter happens, an X will appear on the opponent that was thrown, so you can tell at a glance that you can't throw escape. Did you know that, Luna? Luna knew? Of course Luna would know about that! Okay, new player, time to start the throw counter exercise! Action! Action. Huh? Gonna hurt! Ah, Don't let hate you. <laughs> Nice. You stupid. Excellent. Throws don't reach very far, but they are faster than many attacks. So when you're in a situation where you can counterattack, throw counters are another good option. You can't do a break burst while being thrown, so it also allows you to deal a guaranteed amount of damage. From there, you can do a special attack cancel and go into a combo. Luna's still learning about throw counters too. I'm sure you'll have no trouble remembering what I've taught you about them. After inputting B and C together, a period of time where you can't do a throw escape will be activated. If you're caught by a throw during this period of time, you will get a throw reject miss, and you won't be able to get out of it with a throw escape. So it would be good to put your opponent in a position where they'll want to do a throw escape, then offset the timing of your throw and cause them to get a throw reject miss! That's right. Like after your opponent does an emergency roll or after they've blocked a jumping attack. If you go for a throw in a situation where you're at an advantage, such as after a standing A attack or a crouching A attack, it'll be easier to bait your opponent into getting a throw reject miss. Let's try it out ourselves. Action! <laughs> nice! It's gonna hurt! Don't let me hate you! It's gonna hurt! It's gonna hurt! You stupid! You stupid! You stupid! 
gonna hurt! Idiot! You idiot! Huh? Gonna hurt! Gonna hurt! Out of time? Out of time for this shit. Lesson clear. Very good. At first glance, Throw Reject Miss may seem like a difficult system to use, but it's a very effective technique against advanced players with strong defense. If you try to provoke a Throw Reject Miss and the opponent does a Throw Escape instead, you will still be safe from a counterattack. So one benefit is that there's very little risk for trying it. Oh yeah, even if they Throw Escape, all that happens is you getting pushed away. That's right. And if a throw reject miss does happen, you'll know that your opponent is the type who will try to throw escape preemptively. With that knowledge, you can go for a regular throw or try to break through your opponent's defenses with attacks and figure out which ways are effective for getting the upper hand over your opponent. Test your opponent's defenses with these tactics. This is getting kind of hard. Luna will try it out when she's a little better at fighting. But Luna knows what Senna is thinking, so Luna can do it anytime she wants! If I were your opponent, Luna, I'd bait you into a throw reject miss all the time. Great job, Platinum! As I would expect from my pupil number three, you have trained well! Pupil number three? Huh! Luna's only master is Master Jubei! Hey, hey, don't forget! He promised to buy us food. You there. What are you all doing here? What? It's the Red Devil of Sector 7! Iron Taker! We were going through tutorial mode, helping the new player with their training. You sound as though you're introducing someone. Very well. I will continue the tutorial from this point on. I'd been informed that someone aspiring to be an elite warrior had appeared. My mission led me here. I see. I'd planned to teach them of the elite spirit of Akaraga, but I suppose they have learned a few lessons about fighting and trained by expanding their wealth of knowledge. Then I, Bang Shishigami, will leave our new players training in your hands. I'm counting on you, Taker. I've watched you grow considerably, new player. I look forward to watching you develop further. Pay close attention to Taker's training. I anticipate meeting you after your fighting abilities have matured even further. Let us go, Platinum. Yeah, let's go. There's still more tutorial left for you to go through, but do your best. I've seen your potential. You'll improve in no time. Be polite, Luna. Say goodbye to our friend. You seem like you got a little bit better thanks to Luna's help. Luna was hoping to teach you a little more, though. Luna will train you for longer next time, okay? Luna can't wait! Bye-bye! Hmm. The noisy ones are gone now. My task in coming here is to instruct you on the techniques of an elite warrior. What? It's not like we'll be doing anything that difficult. It's the accomplishment of a warrior.